So you want to buy a skater, eh? Well, somebody asked me what to look for when I'm buying a skater. Well, I'm going to tell you. I got a little bit of an idea because uh, I'm used to this old junk. Yes, this is a Power Mods video. I've been busy. And uh, you know what? At least we're getting a video up, right? All right, so you want to know what to look for when you're buying a used skitter. Well, here you go. I'm going to tell you. This is not for you new skitter buffs. You guys sitting sideways driving up and down mountains. This is for, you know, those kind of machines right there. Now, I'd say maybe pre-1980, something like that. Maybe early 80s. This is a 1965 C5 tree farmer with a Detroit diesel in it. I'll go over a few things. I've noticed I've owned a few skidders and a bunch of equipment before. And, you know, there are a few things to look for uh, when you're buying one of these things. So let's get right into it. Now, I'm going to be picky. I'm going to tell you everything that I see and that I notice wrong and right with one of these things. Usually nothing's right because somebody's selling it. When somebody sells a piece of equipment, especially a skidder, usually means they can't afford to fix it. Uh, their grandpa died, and they're just trying to get rid of it. Um, they know something's wrong with it. They want to get rid of it before uh, they have to put big money into it while it's running. Or they know that there's something wrong with it, and sometimes they even tell you. They're like, hey, you know what? It's going to need a new transmission. Motor's blowing a lot of oil. Whatever, right? 1965. I came out here, and I tapped the starter on this thing. I haven't touched it since last March, and it started right up. Anyway, okay, so number one, um, where are you buying the machine from? Here in Canada, there's a few indicators of, uh, you know, what kind of a piece of junk you're buying because usually all these things are pieces of junk. If the uh, province in which you're buying this starts with a Q and sounds like Schmebeck, chances are pretty good that it's going to be beat on pretty hard, maybe slapped together with a few different parts, um, and they just want it out the door. They're going to try to get as much money as they can for it, uh, but you're uh, pretty much going to get ripped off. Sorry to all my Quebec friends out there. I got lots of them, but you all know what I'm talking about, right? This machine is yellow. It's not a Skidoo. It's as heavy as a Yamaha, but we're not going to get into that. Yeah, I said it. Heavy as a Yamaha. First things first, we're looking at this machine. Tires, right? Forestry or agricultural tires. You gotta look at that. Sometimes it says right on them if they're a farm uh, grade uh, tire. It just means they're like about a six grade, sorry, six ply, as opposed to a forestry tire, which has many more plier, ply, uh, plies in it, you would say. This tire here, the ones on the front, look like they're probably original. And they're good for a long time. I'd probably take one of those over one of these forestry tires any day. Um, or sorry, over one of these agricultural tires any day. Because they're real strong tires, man. Like, I mean, 1965. They're still kicking it. Tires. Check out the weather cracking. No big deal. Looks like it's bad. Those things will go for a long time. Check out that cracking. This is kind of melting away. I don't even know what's happening in those tires. Chains. Everything that a skidder doesn't have or needs is going to cost you money, right? So if you buy a skidder and it has no chains, you're looking at probably a thousand bucks for a used set up to five grand for, you know, a really good set of ice chains. Um, so, and what can you get away with? These chains have been beat real hard. They're old and sloppy. You know, they let go on me the odd time, but I just replace a link. I don't want to put the money into it. Buy new ones, right? So chains are important. I really don't like these uh, this style of chains as much. They're kind of bumpy in the bush and they get packed full of uh, wet snow and then they kind of give you a bumpy ride and they have a tendency to make the front of your machine hop in the deep snow. Not a big fan, but hey, they came with them, right? So we're still looking at the front ends at the uh, planetaries now. Check for oil leakage around the planetaries around these little things here I think these are the sun gears are in here so if they're leaking around there that means you got some seals going bad and if the um, those little pins get loose they're usually made out of bronze I think or brass if they get loose like that one 
that uh, planetary can sort of come apart in there and bust that up. And to find a used one of those right now is probably about 1500 bucks. Depends on where you go. So I got one I know is going to need some attention. Uh, I'm not going to be working this machine too hard this winter, so I'm going to be okay with that. If you want to get down to the nitty gritty of things, you can go inside those. You can just, uh, you know, level the machine out, level the plugs out. You can check the condition of the fluid in them if you want to get that far into it. Um, you'll also want to check the inside of the axles here. Oh, look at that. Bunch of, bunch of gear lube leaking, right? So the front seals are done. I knew that when I bought this. No big deal, honestly. Um... I just top them up, but I know what I'm getting into, right? At least I know. Look at the frame of the machine. Look at all the contact points if you can, um, you know, where the axles, the diffs are bolted onto the machine. Check for cracks. Uh, John Deere's, they have a tendency, the frames on them kind of weak. The older ones, uh, before they were reinforced, they have a tendency to crack on them. Yeah, check out your uh, skid, skid and arch, make sure everything's good there. You still seized? Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, you're good and seized. Oh, that one turns. Usually what I do, I just put a little bit of, um, they seize up over the summer. So I, cause the water sits on top of those bearings right there. So I just put some penetrating oil on there and it sort of seeps through and then I work them. When I work with the cable, it tends to loosen them up. Check the cable condition. Like I said, everything adds up. You know, you're like, oh, well, big cable, I'll, not a big deal, uh, cable's kind of crappy, I'll just buy a new one. Well, man, it's three, 300 bucks, 500 bucks. I go with a really small cable, but it's really long. Easy to carry, uh, especially in this cedar bush here, pulling it through all the garbage, and I can slap a ton of stuff on there. Uh, what else? The winch. You want to make sure the winch works well. This is a real old school mechanical winch on here, uh, a Braden winch works great for me people don't like them but whatever i mean it's on the machine it works yeah i cracked no big deal and everything that's wrong with the skidder should reflect the price i mean it can't reflect the price so much that they have to give you money to take it away but you know you have to think about future repairs like for example i needed to rebuild this steer cylinder that cost me um 500 bucks right new pins Cylinder rebuild, a day down in the bush, rebuild that thing, but it wasn't really turning very well. What else? Uh, condition of the cab, yeah, this one's all cracked, no big deal. Probably put on its side at one time. You'll want to check out the exhaust. If you're planning on working in the summer, when it's, or the spring when it's really dry, you got to have a spark arrestor on it. I put that one on and rebuilt that whole muffler system on there. So if you got to get into an exhaust rebuild, you know, you're, uh, you're looking at adding up some dollars, right? You want to check out your center pins. Just take the blade, move the blade up and down and have somebody or have them, the owner, move the machine up and down with the blade and just check for movement in these, uh, I don't know, center pins, hinge, pin, hinge pins, whatever you want to call them. Check all your U-joints all through the whole machine. See if they're all nice and tight. There's one U joint that's stuck back in there, boy oh boy. If I had to get at that, that'd be real pain in the butt to get at. So far it's good, that's why you gotta keep up on the maintenance. This machine was owned uh, by the same family. It's a 65, they bought it in 71 or 72. Um, and I believe them, good old Ottawa Valley family. Um, so they've had it for quite a long time. Doesn't mean they maintained it, but uh, you know, at least I know the lineage of it. These cylinders here, I had uh, I had both front cylinders rebuilt. That was twelve hundred and fifty bucks. Gives you a bit of an idea. There's no sense even looking for used ones. They're all garbage. Just get them rebuilt, boys. You know, check out the condition of all the pins. Make sure that when this is running, that the hydraulic pressure is enough to lift that front of the machine off the ground by pushing the blade down. Right, you want it nice and warmed up. You got to make sure your hydraulic pump is good. You got to make sure that it steers, it steers properly. Make sure all your linkages work well and everything is fairly tight. Now, brakes. I've never had a skitter where the brakes worked. I just use a low gear, drop the blade if I need to, real hard on it. Um, 
But yeah, uh, I will probably will fix the brakes on this thing, maybe next summer when I get back to my property. Front articulating differential here. I forget what they call that. This is a saddle. Uh, I forget what it's called, but it, it actually, uh, it actually articulates. Another thing you want to do is get somebody to push down on the front of the machine with the blade or push the blade down and lift the front up and just see what kind of movement you have in that. If it's banging up and down, you're going to run into problems a little later on. You got to make sure those uh, front pins are good that hold it on. Same thing with the diffs. Make sure the diffs are in good shape. If you can pop the cap off, stick your finger in the, in the hole, see what the condition of the oil is. You don't want something that's black. You want something that's kind of clean. But also keep in mind, some people change things out, especially fluids, when they want to hide something. So you got you to gotta keep that in mind. These are exposed transmissions. Rain does get in there. So check out the fluid in your tranny. Make sure that it's not full of uh, water. If it's all milky and it looks gray uh, with water contamination in there, um, chances are pretty good that your bearings are going to be you know, pretty rusted up and you might run into issues with that. Maybe, maybe a transmission rebuild, but at least you can pull this one out. Same with the transfer case. Transfer case and this one's behind this plate. I know it leaks like a stuck pig. Um, I'm going to have to pull it and replace all the seals on it. I just literally top up the fluid and I know I'm pretty good. I can just top it up once during the winter and I'm good. Also get in there and clean all those leaves out. That's the stuff that catches fire, right? Now, when you're starting this, first of all, put your hand on the motor, make sure it hasn't been started before you got there. That's a clever trick. Everybody starts them up before you get there. Make sure they're nice and warm, right? Uh-uh. You want that thing cold. And I'd tell them before you get there, leave it cold. Or if it's in a heated shop, leave it outside. You want to make sure these things start in the cold, man, because that's where it's going to be parked, right? Detroit diesel, um, pretty simple. I'd say that if it's knocking, it's a Detroit. <laughs> it's not that necessarily a bad thing. If it's smoking out the back, not that necessarily a bad thing. That's what they do, they smoke. This one blows a ton of white smoke. It's just over fueled and that's just the way these uh, machines were built. Um, the oil's gonna be black, black, black. Even a fresh oil change is gonna be black. You just gotta make sure it's a real, um, a, a good motor. This motor I don't think has ever been rebuilt. It's got tons of power. I can put the blade up against a tree and you can ask the owner of the machine to do this. Put that blade up against a tree and just put it in gear and see if it'll spin the tires. You want to make sure your clutch is good. You want to make sure it has enough power to spin those tires. If it doesn't, you know, you're looking at a rebuild or a clutch and the clutch rebuild on this is a real pain in the butt, although it's doable. I pulled that tranny out with the block and tackle hooked up to the top there and I just pulled it out and I rebuilt everything. It was about minus 25 or minus 30 when I did it. Got a nice new clutch in there, ready to go. Um, filter changes and all that. You can expect on doing a whole fluid change on the machine. I would anyway, I did. And you're looking at several hundred dollars, if not close to a thousand by the time you add filters. If you pay 10 grand for a machine like this, you're going to be looking at probably anywhere from two to five grand in the first year, just on dicking around with cylinders and fluid changes and nonsense that happens, little injector fixes and rack fixes and rack tuning and all that kind of stuff, at least five grand. You know, the name of the game is not spending a whole lot of money on these uh, things, but they, they still have to make you money if you're into that. If you're just poking around on your property, you know, it is what it is, cleaning up stuff. But you just, you don't want to put a whole lot of money into these, right? The gas motor version of these, don't know very much about them, but the same things apply. You know, you don't want a whole bunch of uh, uh, blue smoke coming out the back of it. Uh, you don't want a bunch of blow by uh, when you lift, when you take the rad cap, or not the rad cap, but the uh, engine cap off, the oil cap, oil fill cap. You want a bunch of blow by there. You want to make sure your rad fluid's nice and clean. It's not down in there. Um, you also want to check your rad, make sure there's no leaks. Check all your hoses. Make sure they're all tickety-boo. Pop the panels off. Look for obvious oil leaks. This one has an oil bath filter on it. Um, you know, some people swap them out for air filters, whatever. You know, I've run this thing. It just keeps going. It's, there's really no sense spending the money on it. I had to replace a couple of hoses like this uh, hump hose there, whatever you want to call it. 
belts I had to change. I had to change the alternator on it. Fully expected to do that. No big deal. Check the condition of all these hoses. Make sure they're good. Let's see. Do we have any rat fluid in there? Yeah. It's pretty good. Right where I left it last spring. That's awesome. I put a new thermostat in it as well. This one has a, uh, see all these sticks get in here? That's what starts the fires, boys. That's what starts the fires. I've had it. I've had them smoking on me before. It's not pretty. You start moving pretty fast. This one's got a block heater or a uh, inline uh, coolant heater. Really helps on the real nasty days if you bring your little generator and get her started. But you know what? With the ether, I get this thing going every time in the winter. It just keeps going and going and going. I have a, a new motor to put in this, a new Perkins, if this one dies, but you know what's going to happen. As long as I have that motor, it's never going to die, right? Single wire alternator. One thing you should think about with these, especially the Detroit, is first thing I do, I get a mechanic in. If you can find one who knows these old rigs, uh, get them to set the rack in it, set the governor up. Everything sort of has to be done at the same time anyway. Make sure she's running good. I know I have a seal around the, a um, couple of seals at the front of that motor that are done. Leaks a little bit of oil, uh, but you know what? I'm not dealing with that right now. I can deal with it some other time. I had to put a new starter in it. That's 500 bucks. Replace all the clutch lines. It's got a hydraulic clutch in it. You know, has this skitter been abused? <laughs> well, man, come on. They're all abused. You just see what we drive these things through. They're freaking awesome. It's just the way it is. You know, could I spend, I could spend $30,000 on this machine in the course of a summer trying to get it all tidied right up easily. You know, that's the uh, little lever for the blade. This one has a uh, steer lever. Move it side to side for your steering. Even the battery costs money, right? Make sure your chain is good. Make sure everything is lubed. You know, just with simple stuff like this, you want to make sure it looks like the owner has actually sort of at least done something to it. Not just hopped in her and given her every day, right? But that's about it. Those are my thoughts on this. I mean, literally when I saw this thing, the guy started it and I said, hey, I'll take it. <laughs> I pretty much know what I'm dealing with. No, I did move the blade up and down. I want to check the center pins, make sure everything's fairly tight. It's a pain in the pain in the butt if you really got to get into the heavy work on these things just moving one of those tires around is a real pain in the butt right all right hope that's a little bit of info for you any questions let me know